I would say club cricket every day. It's a proper community feel. It's hard work running a cricket club. It's given me friendship that will be with me for the rest of my life. Club cricket, ground zero for the sport. With approximately half a million people taking part each summer, we at Sky decided to check up on the health of the grassroots game. We're in the Midlands. Three clubs visited, Berkswell in the Birmingham League, Fleckney Village and near neighbours Kibworth in Leicestershire, who are in store for a busy summer as they host their first ever men's List A game. Running run a first class cricket match as a, as, as a team of volunteers is, is going to be a, a, a mammoth effort, but one that we want to do, that, that output from that, as I said earlier, that output from volunteering, what we get out of it is, is fascinating. So yeah, last year have been brilliant. Um, Sean, since Sean's been, been there and, and Nico have been there, the relationship's really developed with the community clubs. And we've been able to take advantage of that from that second team aspect. They've been delighted what we do when the second team are here. Um, and that's led to us being able to get this, uh, this game in August. It was essential once we moved from the village ground to here that we needed to be able to, to move our game on um, and it was important that we had then the facilities to be able to do that and obviously way back when we moved here 2006 um, it was obviously one of the, uh, the objectives to host county cricket. Um, you know that was one of the main objectives to be able to have the facilities to be able to do that. It's taken probably a bit longer than we would have wanted to um, but yeah as you say later on this year we will achieve that. So this is Kibworth Cricket Club. It's hugely successful both on and off the field and it's very well resourced. But about three quarters of a mile that way is Fleckney Village Cricket Club. Now they are council owned, they own none of their facilities, so one would assume that they would be struggling. The participation levels, you would actually say, are pretty good. For, 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 for your club? They are ridiculous. Um, an example. Well, how do you cope? Well, <laughs> here's an example. Last year, on the final Sunday of the season, we had 25 players available for one fixture. I think we really pride ourselves on our village status. And I think it is that we are village cricket uh, as opposed to Premier League cricket, which Kibworth are, although they, you know, they are in a village. But I think it's the village of Fleckney, the villageness of the village that makes it uh, particularly attractive to some <laughs> players. One of our oldest players, he's still playing. I think he's 78 or 79. No one actually knows how old he is. <laughs> um, he comes from Colville, you know, twice a week to come here and play cricket. And that's quite a journey, it's well, 20 mile away, so it's a 40, 50 mile round trip. And if we're playing over in Rutland, he could do 100 mile in a weekend to come play cricket, and he loves it. 10 miles north of Fleckney Village, Asian Sports Cricket Club, an inner city team in Leicester, have to travel far and wide to get a game of cricket on. When it comes to our facility side, it is a challenge because we've got four teams that play on a Saturday, or 13 plays um, in, a, in a rural part of Leicester, which is a 50 mile round trip and we've got our fourth team that play again um, out of the Leicester boundaries, which is you know, approximately sort of 10 to 15 mile. I think from a youth league perspective, our main objective, our next objective is to work harder within the city. Um, I think um, people of multi-heritage backgrounds, um, players that don't have the opportunity in terms of transport. I think the next stage is to try and bring more cricket into the city on the parks, on local facilities within Leicester. With the multicultural society that we've got, there are an ample amount of players that are actually interested in playing cricket itself within the city boundaries. Due to sort of ground availability, there are not as many teams as I would have thought in the actual city of Leicester itself. Dominic Osler, the new batsman. Played. Dominic Osler was my teammate at Warwickshire, a superb middle order batter. After retirement, he would turn out for his local club side, Berkswell, and he's still involved at the club to this day. When I started playing, we, we decided what, what do we want to do as a, as a club, where do we want to go? Do we want to just enjoy ourselves and carry on playing this village cricket, or do we want to try and uh, make something of the club and see if we can climb up the leagues and, uh, and be a force in the, uh, in the Birmingham League? Probably 2010-11 we started to get some overseas pros in to really come and, uh, and, and promote the club and give us that injection of, uh, of experience and professionalism we needed to, uh, to either keep us in the league or to try and get us up another league. I think the standard is really high now. There's an awful lot of talent out there and now they're playing on a Saturday because it gives them 
for a pro, for a pro's mindset, it gives them, if they're not informed, they can come and have a hit on a, on a Saturday afternoon, but play against decent cricket. So it gives them the platform to go and, right, go and get themselves a bit of nick. Wicket first international wicket for Izzy Wong is an absolute beauty. From hat trick heroics in the WPL to opening the bowling for England, Izzy Wong is one of the best young players in the world. Like Dom, Berkswell has played a key role in her cricketing journey. Played my boys' cricket at Nolan Dorridge, but they didn't have a women's side, so I came here to Berkswell and played women's cricket here at Berkswell from about the age of 12, 13. Um, and I think both were really, really helpful. Um, obviously, Boys stuff, playing with people my own age, um, playing against boys as well that are a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. Um, but playing, you know, with the girls was, you know, I got to play with girls a bit older than me, um, probably matured me a little bit, but also, yeah, made some really good friends. Most of the first teams in the Premier League teams, from, from the understanding I get from, from our team, they would like to see some subtle changes. They'd like to see a little bit of an earlier start. So they start at 12.30. Yep. They'd be keen on the 11 o'clock start. My personal side of things, I've got a young family now, and now saying to my partner, I'm going out for 12 hours on a Saturday afternoon, um, doesn't always cut it. But, and, and, and as players like myself, and that are at that age where they get families, that's where the little bit of challenge comes. For me, we play one-day cricket, I need a result at the end of a one-day game. And if we're following the formats of 50-over cricket, England, everything plays like that, we need to play 50-over cricket, colour clothing, keep people entertained, and at the end of it, win-lose. There's a picture of our first team from Berkshire, and there's you know five or six of them, if not more, that I'm still in contact with. Um, today. I'm here on a Friday, uh, usually sometimes on a Sunday as well. We play uh, junior games on a Sunday, so any spare time. And I do, it, I do it for the community, but mostly I do it for my son as well. So uh, my son enjoys cricket and, it, you know, it started from here. It started from Fletney. It's absolutely worthwhile. I, uh, I dedicate so much time here, but what I take away from it in terms of that satisfaction of putting a game of cricket on, yeah. putting an event on in the bar is, is, is uh, second to none, I really enjoy it.